Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I wanna to go back to my Monday miracle story that I did yesterday. And I wanna explain a couple of things to you uh, that you may not understand or know. And I don't like to not explain exactly when I talk about things. Uh, I like to go into detail. So today I'm gonna to tell you a little more about this miracle story. Going back, I told you that I had went into a private room with the lady, and while I was praying out loud, just in my regular fey prayer language, you know, human language that we can cognitively understand, Holy Spirit told me to pray in tongues for her, and he also told me to put my hand on her back and go down her back, and then put my hand on her chest as I was praying in tongues over her. I want to show you something in the Bible that connects to what I was doing that day. I'm over in Romans 8, 26, so here we go, and it says, Also, in the same way, the Spirit helps us with or in our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should or what we ought to pray for. Okay? I want to stop right there, and I want to explain to you what the Bible, that word weakness means, because sometimes we think that that just means if we're sick or something. Watch. This word in the Greek, uh, it says the want or strength, weakness or infirmity. But here it says in, under number one, of the body, the weakness of the body. It talks about feebleness or health or sickness. That, that's, that can apply. But what I want to show you also, it's listed under number two. It says of the soul. Now, our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. So our soul can be weak as well. And basically what that means is we don't understand. I'm going to read you what it says. It's number one, the want of strength and capacity to requisite, uh, to understand a thing. See, that that was me not understanding how I needed to pray effectively for her. And there was something that God wanted to do for her that day that I didn't have knowledge of. So he told me to pray in my prayer language, my unknown uh, tongues, uh, my special language that was given to me when I was, I asked the Father. Jesus says, if you want it, ask for it. Ask him and he will give to you Holy Spirit. So I have a prayer language called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, and it's my personal prayer language. So I did not understand how I needed to pray for her to be effective to help her. So Holy Spirit, he came in communion with my spirit man and said, do it like this. Got it? Okay. Uh, so here we go. Let's go. And now the soul also, let me finish this because this may help you as well. So the soul, our mind, will, and, commo and emotion is to uh, our ability maybe not to completely understand a thing. Uh, it also says to do things great and glorious and then to restrain or corrupt desires. So us praying in tongues can also keep us from uh, going after some corrupt desires that we may have. Uh, you know, I remember when I uh, I was remodeling my home in Woodland Park and I was getting very, very frustrated because I couldn't get a cabinet off the wall and I was so irritated. I just started praying in tongues out loud and Courtney, the little girl that I've mentored, came up and says, Mama Faye, are you, are you cussing in tongues? And I said, well, I don't know, baby, because I'm pretty mad right now. <laughs> and you know what? Instead of me losing my temper and saying a lot of carnal things, because we have what we say, guys, okay? So if I start speaking a bunch of negative stuff, I might as well get my front door open because it's gonna be piled in on top of me. So instead of when I start losing my temper or getting upset, I pray in tongues because look, number five, it says it restrains a corrupt desire. I can restrain my desire to lose my temper or to say things that I don't need to be saying. Num the, the next one underneath this, uh, also says to bear trials and troubles. So when I'm uh, going through some things, I'm also praying in tongues. 
because the Bible tells me that when I pray in the Spirit, it edifies me and builds me up. So your prayer language is very, very, very important. So let's go back to my snippet. So that explains what I meant by when I was praying in tongues over her. Because see, my new spirit, I am a new man. When a person is born again, the old man dies and a new man resurrects. That new man has been redeemed. He's been set back in the position of a son seen as with the Father as sinless and made righteous by Jesus. So I have a new man, and I have a new spirit. My spirit is new because the old spirit went away, okay? So I have a new spirit, and then I also have God's spirit living in me, his influence in me. So I have a brand new good spirit man of my own that God gave me when I'm born again, from above, but I also have Holy Spirit. He is living in me, and He is influencing me as I go. I'm going to connect this for you. Um, I want to show you in Romans 8, 14 through 16 now, okay? It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now, I want to explain that real quick. That scripture says, that all who are led, and in the Greek, that word led by the Spirit, it means that word led. We, we, we think that Holy Spirit is going to grab us by the collar and jerk us. If he sees somebody at Walmart that he wants us to pray for, he's just going to take us and snatch us over there and make us do that. That is not what this verse is saying. This verse is saying that word led in the Greek means to take with to go with, and to move with, okay? So watch this. I have this new man in me, this new spirit that God gave me. So now I've been given the mind of Christ, so I think like, and I act like, and I move just like Jesus. And if I see something that needs to be taken care of in my Father's kingdom, I'm just going to go do that. Holy Spirit doesn't have to say, hey, Faye, go fix that, okay? It's just like if you go to your mom's house and you know exactly how she likes certain things to be in her home. Say there's a vase sitting on her coffee table and it's turned over. You know as a daughter or a son, you just go right over there and you stand that thing back up and put it the way mom likes it to be in her home, right? It's the same way in the kingdom of God. We see something that doesn't look like heaven and we know automatically that is not our Father's will or His want, what He likes and what He wants. So we fix it because we're good kids, right? But here's another thing. If I need Holy Spirit, He's in me and with me because right here, as a son of God, I am going with and moving with continually with the Spirit of God. So He gives me special strength or ability to do things, that vase may be heavy, by the way. He's going to help me stand that vase up and make it upright. So my new girl, the daughter of God, a son of God, means that I know what my father wants in his kingdom. And the Spirit of God is going to go with me to help me accomplish that thing. Do you remember I was talking about being on the patio the two or three days later, and he told me, he said, tell the lady not to worry about this cancer thing. It's a done deal. It's gone. Did you know I had no idea that she hadn't told anybody that she had been diagnosed that, so I didn't understand what he was talking about. But watch. See, that's one of his gifts that he operates and flows in me is that word of knowledge and word of wisdom. He told me what was going on because she was getting very, very worried because she was going to the doctor again in two or three days to find out about that. And he wanted to give his peace to her. And he did that through me by saying, tell her not to worry about that anymore because it's been handled. And sure enough, I was right on with exactly what he told me. So anyway, I want to just explain a little bit because I'm going to keep going on this for a day or two. I just want you to understand that we have a spirit man who knows God's will now. 
if you're born again because you're a son of God and you know what your father wants because he wants it to be like heaven here on earth. And then we have Holy Spirit to help us accomplish that. Okay, guys? Listen, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you again right here tomorrow. I love every single one of you and God bless you. Bye-bye.